last few videos, I've made some big leaps forward to get text rendering working. Now that I have enough building blocks ready, I'm going to start bringing everything together inside the code base. First, I make some decisions in the code base about organization. As a refresher, the graphics code is currently all organized like this. I have a top level folder called GFX, which contains OS specific layers and graphics API specific layers. The graphics API specific layers also contain sub layers that are OS specific layers for code that depends on both the OS and graphics API. Now I'm adding a new kind of layer to the top level, a renderer layer. A renderer will be a layer that makes specific decisions about what style of graphics an application will use. In this case, I'm going to name the layer Tool2D because it is a specifically designed for developing tools that only need simple 2D graphics. In particular, it will support rectangles and text as I outlined in the first video of this arc. A renderer layer serves two purposes. The first is to applications to provide a high-level API for creating graphics. And the second is a low-level API to the renderer backends that implement the renderer. A renderer backend will be code that knows what sort of rendering style is being implemented and which graphics API is being used to implement it. Right now, I'm getting my implementations ported into the code base, so I'm focusing on that low level API. Here, I'm setting up an OpenGL backend renderer for this new API I've sketched out. The layer will be filled in from the OpenGL Scratch program where I first implemented shaders and rounded rectangles and textures. After a lot of massaging, it looks like I have most of the OpenGL work from the OpenGL Scratch transplanted and set up behind this new Tool 2D API. The design of the low-level abstraction that I have so far goes like this. A Tool 2D quad has all of the information that needs to be submitted to the renderer to specify one quad. The XY coordinates in the pixel space, the UV coordinates in normalized texture coordinate space, radius and thickness in pixel space, and the two RGBA colors. Batches of these quads will be organized into arbitrarily long arrays and chained together in tool 2D quad node structures. The API takes the head of one chain of quad nodes, add a total count of quads to be submitted, and then an optional texture reference. On top of that main submit API, there's a few additional functions in the API for initializing the system and targeting specific windows and dealing with textures. I find the function gl buffer subdata to be super useful for implementing this kind of thing. With this, I can submit batches of data from each node in the chain without having to assemble them on the CPU side first. I don't know for sure, but I suspect transfer rate trumps number of calls as long as I'm using relatively large array batches here. So the chains just give me this extra degree of flexibility for chaining things together, and I don't think I pay that much extra for assembling them this way. Now I want to put all this to the test, so I'm mainly setting up a batch of quads to submit.
And there we have it. The rounded rectangles are up and running in the core code base. Next time, I'll get started on transplanting the text rendering work too. See you then. Thank you.